What up, though? Welcome to Woman Crush. Every, Every day, day where we discuss queer media, especially when it is black, black and especially when it is woman. woman. I'm your host, Tang B, a.k.a. Sean B. Scribe. And I'm your host, Allison, a.k.a. Al Wu. And today we are going to discuss Pause with Sam J, Season 2, Episode 3. But first... Subscribe! You know you gotta subscribe. Stop playing with us. Go ahead and do that, because we're representing this black queer power out here. For y'all, we consume this television movies all these shows blah 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 so we can build community and talk about this and share in this story you know in our stories and celebrate them so subscribe subscribe and join the conversation and we know we're coming with this episode a little late this week but it is for a reason because we have been out here working working okay no real real talk accolades out here going around people graduating people (laughs) getting awards people going to conferences and we're also working on a play right now yeah we are in rehearsals so I wrote a play. Allison is acting in the play. And yes, I am. Um, it's happening in Obsidian Theater Fest. Yes. Uh, uh, Shantae's play, We Own Everything. Um, yeah, I'm I'm Lil Bug, Lil June Bug. Yeah. I, I'm going to go in. I'm going to divulge a little bit of this. But yeah, yeah, it's streaming July 7th. Yes. Right? Yes. And you can find out about it on obsidianfest.org org yes obsidian indeed. like the obsidian stone yes and of course you know we can throw a tag or link yeah, in, the in the description yeah, so absolutely. yeah learn more there and all that good stuff so before we you know we keep going on and on about all the wonderful things we've been up to let's go ahead and get into season two episode three, episode three. of pause with sam J. so um, this episode is about Sam J. Well, one, the episode's called I Know Why the Caged Homie Sings. And it's a little bit, it's a more serious episode where Sam J is talking about the prison industrial complex and, um, its impact on black people, specifically black men and, she reflects on her brother, her older brother, who went to prison and how his time away impacted her and their family and how things changed over time. So that's kind of the a quick synopsis of the mm-hmm. episode. Uh, of course, a couple sketches are thrown in between. And uh, there's that. So, uh, you know how we do. Favorite part. Favorite part. Um... For me, outside of the comedy, my favorite part is always the conversations that Sam J has. And so I really appreciated the conversation that she had with the father who went to prison when his daughters were young and also being able to talk to the daughters and see their different experiences of it. Um, The older daughter who had been able to spend time with him and like Mm -hmm. he's putting in the work. He is just like you in all the classes, you in all the hobbies, extracurriculars, I'm there, bicycles, what, what. And then he goes to prison and the younger daughter doesn't get any of that. And even their demeanor, you can see the difference in what tolls it took on them Mm -hmm. um, in different ways. Um, And so I appreciate that about the episode. It it makes me think about, um, you know, people in my own family who uh, have gone to prison. I'm thinking about one relative in particular and how hard it is to rebuild that relationship or familiarity when you have no real memories with this person Mm -hmm. um or the memories are very distant um and so to now be with them in close proximity it's this foreignness and all of these things that you have to get over and i can only imagine if i'm the daughter of that person and my sister has a totally different love and relationship with you that i didn't get to have um so i just thought that was a nice moment of of just exploring that whole dichotomy that whole consequence of what happens um in this really fucked up prison industrial complex Mm -hmm. yeah that's a favorite moment yeah okay um well that was deep that was was it was a tough moment (laughs) um yeah i think it's tough for me because i don't 
I don't have any family that I've lost to jail like that, you know, and I think to experience that personally is really deep. And honestly, just listening to you talk about it now and it changes how I internalize this episode. Mm. So I'm also like, wow. Oh man. (laughs) Um, But if I had to go into my favorite part of the episode, just off of first viewing, I would give it to, there's a a sketch where Sam J invites people in to um, pretty much decide how much time a person should get for a particular crime, according to their pictures that she, you know, she's putting pictures on a projector and showing them off and her description of their crimes Which and ridiculous. who they are and what they did. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was just funny to see how people internalize or at least not internalize, but talk about what, time they feel people should get for whatever um there was also like a moment of ew in that is this a dog in the screen yeah this is hilarious <laughs> in, okay at no, some no, point no. he was gonna jump in and be yeah. like i want to make a debut <laughs> this is truffle this is truffle everyone He's in the studio He's a standard poodle. I didn't know that poodles were this size, just for the record. They're big. They are and huge. He's, he's very big. He's he's very big. Jesus. All right. But you're going to lay down. You're going to lay down? He's like, I'll sit down. Say. Don't try to, don't try to. No, nope, no. Nope. Make an appearance. You're trying to show out. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. We have to say, uh-uh. <laughs> Go lay down. Go lay down. I feel like Pauly Murray. We're, yeah, we're having a Pauly Murray moment. Yeah, if you haven't seen the Pauly Murray review, <laughs> yeah. lie down. <laughs> lay down. like an icon. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what was I going to say? The sketches were funny. Oh, there was a moment in that sketch, though, that was so weird. So um, she goes into, Sam J goes into, like, where what if this one dude committed a crime and then, but then he was also like doing some gay shit on the lows. Um, you know, how much time should he get in prison? And one of the panelists was like, Oh, he might like going to prison. Cause he's into that, that gay shit essentially. And gross. I'm like, Eek. so fucked up. Um, so yeah, way to ruin a good thing. Um, <laughs> but you know, they did call it out. So I also say that was a part of the favorite moments that we stopped to like, pause on that and be like not nah, cool bro yeah um okay so I, I i established last week and in the past few weeks that sam j boom is woman crush by default <laughs> up until we switching it up you know what i'm saying yeah. i mean yeah that's pretty much it because i mean there's this isn't even a crushing episode this is this is a very serious episode right even the sketches were had a very serious undertone to them. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can tell that there's just like a very personal connection for her. So Mm -hmm. yeah, woman crush, um, Sam J for continuing to be vulnerable um, and share, share these portions with us. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear that. Yeah. Okay. Um, What's next? What can stay? What can stay, you know, I love the sketches. I love the sketches thrown in. Um, just to just to shake it up a little bit. Um, I think, I don't know. Um, there was there was this line where, uh, maybe this was like a favorite moment, but actually there was this line that I wrote down where Sam J says, prison doesn't let you see the math. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I would say what can stay are, are these conversations that let you hear like these gems yeah, like that. And what prison doesn't see the math. Cause I'm like, Oh yeah. Out of context. What the fuck does that mean? Um, she was talking about how people change in prison and the ways in which they change or, or not, not the ways necessarily, but why people change, what causes them to change? What are the interactions that happen in prison that everybody on the outside doesn't get to see. They Mm. knew who they knew before 
Yeah. Before they went to prison. And then when they come out of prison, they have, they don't get to see the math. You know, like people who are on the outside the whole time never get to see what happened. Never get to know. And like, you never trust, like, are what they, is what they are telling me the the full story and it's like of course not yeah because nobody could ever tell you every single day yeah. that impacted them every single moment every single interaction yeah. like you just get the sum you just get the sum of it all so it's like yeah you don't get to see the math and i think that just moments where you get to hear lines like that and like really feel that can totally stay yeah i wrote the sweater vest can go <laughs> I don't even remember what it was. That maybe that was in that sketch or something. But I was like, the sweater vest can go. <laughs> you weren't feeling the sweater. I wasn't feeling that. All right, all right. So what can stay? What can go? Um. Yeah. I mean, I agree. The conversations. Um. Whether it's the conversation that at, is at this curated party or the conversations from the interviews. Um. I think they're really valuable, and this was a really conversation heavy episode, especially even with um. When she had the late night show Mm -hmm. and um, had somebody who had been incarcerated come on and talk. And even that was like, we're going to create comedy out of conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, So all of that can stay. Um, What can go for me in the vulnerability? I think. I think it is really important right now for people to be open in new ways to model that um and that this is an episode that really involves a personal relationship you know at first it kind of made me uncomfortable but um because I was just like you know how does her brother feel about this but it seems you know he's he's team Sam J Mm -hmm. you know that's his little sister so um I think just being able to have such a personal connection. I think she has a personal connection to every episode and every theme of every episode. But this one is like a familial personal connection. I feel like that's a different level Mm -hmm. of vulnerability that nobody has to do. Um, And I know that's going to affect a lot of other people, you know hoping that they watch, you know, Mm -hmm. so that they can catch it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's dope. Uh, What can go for me is, uh, I suck for saying this, but I kind of wanted it to be funnier. (laughs) Um, And I think I needed some more funny. And maybe because I have a smidgen of my own personal connection. Mm -hmm. And so to take it in, it's just like, yeah, I take it in with you, Sam J, because you're going to give me the serious and you're going to give me some funny and then we're going to get some bridges in between. And I look forward to that. It wasn't my kind of funny. I don't know. Um, So that's it. But, you know, next week it could be different. That's real. Um, Okay. So queer canon. Queer canon. For me, um, this episode is not very queer outside of the fact that it is a queer black woman doing it, um, which, you know, maybe makes it very queer. <laughs> but I also think it is continuously important that when black queer women are telling stories that the centering is not always just on queerness. And I think I am even learning that in my own storytelling and going deeper within myself. Um, I think it's really important to tell stories that are about being queer because there can never be enough examples out there. But also I just appreciate when it's just like, yo, I'm intersectional and Sometimes I need to shine a light brighter in another area that needs attention. I love how you said that. I totally agree. And what she said. Boom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm going to say I, I can add a little bit more, but I do think um, that that's very much how I felt like the queerness is the fact that Sam J did it. Boom. I feel like that's yeah. kind of like, like, um, 
when we talked about Black Lady Sketch Show. Yeah. You know, in that, like, some of these are straight as fuck. They are, you know, just kind of, they really don't have anything to do with being queer, but the person who was, like, head writer on the show and making the show happen is a queer black woman. You know yeah. what I mean? So, boom. <laughs> you know, like, it just, there that the, you're going to get the essence. You're going to yeah. get some some trickle down. You're going to get some residual, <laughs> you know, yeah. black lesbian. They can't help but be them. Yeah, yeah. You know? so, so, that's yeah. where it fits. It's just, like, we exist. We're here. We're queer. And we doing it. <laughs> that's it. Writing it, running it, all of that. You know? <laughs> So, yeah. 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 All right. So, yeah, that's season two, episode three. Pause with Sam J. Let us know what y'all think about the episode. Yeah. If yeah. you had a favorite moment, did this episode touch you? Did you think it was funny? Are you like, y'all need to fix you all attitude and laugh? You know, maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe we try again yeah. next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely check out ObsidianTheaterFest.org. Check yes, us out and we own everything. See the work. See yes. the work where we tell queer stories. Yes. We represent black queer women in the media. Yes. Let's go. So check us out. And if you happen to be in the city of Detroit and vaccinated, um <laughs> <laughs> then you can check it out live June 23rd and 26th. But then yes. see everything in between too, because yes. there's all kind of black shows going up. Black people directing it, black stage managers. It's beautiful. Please check out the work. It's going to be at the Bowl Theater. Bowl YMCA, yeah. yeah. So um, check it out. And you just reserve seats. Um, it costs you nothing but your time and attention. Does it? Um, and we're going we gonna to give you what you want. So You know how we do. You're going to enjoy it. All right. Boom. Peace. <laughs>